Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to do a more formal derivation of how to calculate the maximum power delivered to the load impedance. So we have a circuit, which we're going to then convert to a Thevenin equivalent circuit, which gives us the Thevenin voltage and the Thevenin impedance. And then attached to that, we're going to get to load, the load impedance. And we want to maximize the power transferred to the load impedance. Now here, when we take a look at the phase of the diagram, notice that if we add the resistance portion of the load and the resistance portion of the definite circuit, we get the equivalent resistance of the total circuit. And when we add the reactance of the load plus the reactance of the definite circuit, we get the total reactance of the circuit. And then, of course, the vector sum will give us the impedance. Now, the power transferred will be one half the current squared times the resistance of the load. That is the power then transferred to the impedance uh, of the load. And the way to calculate that is then to replace the current by what the current is equal to, which is the voltage divided by the total impedance. So we take the voltage divided by the total impedance, which is the sum of the resistances and the sum of the reactances. Since we have it squared, the total impedance squared will be, via the phase diagram here, will simply be this squared plus this squared equals z squared, so that gives us the denominator, and in the numerator we have the voltage squared multiplied times one half, or multiplied times the load resistance. So now we have an equation for the power transferred to the load. We're now going to take the partial derivative of that with respect to the load reactance. Then we're going to do it again. We're going to take the partial derivative of the power transferred with respect to the load resistance. In each case, we're going to then set those equal to zero, over here and over here, to find the values for which we get the maximum power transferred. So first, we take the partial derivative with respect to the load reactance. When we do that, we get the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, which is going to be equal to zero. So this term drops away. So we'll go ahead and cancel this term out. Minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. So we have the numerator, or minus the numerator, times the derivative of this. Now it's the partial derivative with respect to, whoop, I gotta have that, with respect to the reactance of, um, the reactance of the load. So that means that this goes to zero, and this will get two times this quantity to the first power times one. So we have two times this quantity to the first power times one. We then divide that by the denominator squared. Now that doesn't matter so much because if we set the whole fraction equal to zero, we know that a fraction is equal to zero when the numerator is equal to zero. We don't care about the denominator. So then we set the numerator equal to zero. So that this portion, the one half, cancel out with the two. So minus the voltage squared times the resistance times the sum of the two reactances set equal to zero. And then you can see that this quantity here is equal to zero when x sub L plus x, x of the, x sub L, of course, meaning the, the reactance of the load plus the reactance of the Thevenin equivalent circuit equals zero, which requires that the reactance of the load must equal the negative of the reactance of the Thevenin circuit, something we saw in the previous video. Now we're going to take the partial derivative of this again, but now with respect to the resistance of the load. So here we did it to the reactance of the load. Now we take it to the resistance of the load because we want to find out what value for the resistance of the load we need in order to find the maximum power transferred. Again, we take the derivative, so we take the denominator, times the derivative of the numerator, but with respect to R sub L now. So that means we get the numerator or the denominator times one half V squared. Whoa, I'm missing. A v squared right here. Uh, yep, v squared. And um, then minus the numerator, which of course will also be v squared right there, one half v theta squared times r sub l times the derivative of the denominator with respect to r sub l. Me means that portion goes to zero, and here we get two times r sub l plus r of the equivalent Thevenin circuit, all divided by the denominator squared again. Again, we're going to set that fraction equal to zero because we want to find the maximum value for P for a specific value for R sub L. So when we take the numerator and set equal to zero, we get this, and of course, then we're going to get one half the Thevenin voltage squared. We're going to factor that out. We're left with this quantity right here, minus two times, this is gone, R sub L 
times R sub L plus R uh, of the equivalent term in a circuit. So now again, we set that equal to zero, and when we do that, we go ahead and multiply this out. When we do that over here, we multiply this out. Then we multiply this with this, so we get this quantity plus the sum of the two reactances squared minus 2 times R sub L squared and minus 2 times R sub L times R th equals 0. So when we do that, notice that the R sub L cancel out. We have a R sub L squared here and minus 2 R sub L here, so we get a minus R sub L squared. We get the R thevenin squared, and this quantity here cancels out that quantity there, so we can put lines through that to simplify that. Those cancel out. So now we're left with this and one of those, well, actually, minus one of those, plus this, plus the value inside the parentheses, all equal to zero. If we now take this here, r sub l, and solve for r sub l, so we move this to the other side, we take the square root of both sides, we get r sub l is equal to the square root of r thevenin squared plus the sum of the two reactants in squared. Now, we realize that from the previous derivation, x sub l must equal minus x th, so this must equal the negative of that, so this goes to zero, which then implies that both the reactance of the Thevenin equivalent circuit must equal the negative of the reactance of the load, and when this goes to zero, then we realize that the resistance of the load must equal the resistance of the Thevenin equivalent circuit. A second condition. Both conditions combined determine that will then give us the maximum power transferred, which is defined by that equation. So we get the maximum power when the reactance of the Thevenin circuit equals the negative reactance of the load, and that the reactance of, of the resistance of the load equals the resistance of the Thevenin circuit. If we match those two, then we have the maximum power transferred, which means that the impedance of the load, which is equal to the resistance of the load plus the reactance of the load, must equal, since these are equal, the resistance of the Thevenin circuit minus the reactions of the reaction of the Thevenin circuit, the reactance of the Thevenin circuit, and so, since R, the resistance of the Thevenin circuit, minus the reactance of the Thevenin circuit, is equal to the, what we call the complex conjugate of the impedance of the Thevenin circuit, we then know that the impedance of the load must equal the complex conjugate of the impedance of the Thevenin circuit. And if we make sure that's the case, then we get the maximum power transferred uh, from the circuit to the load impedance. And that is how it's done.